Uh, welcome everyone to the uh, Wednesday, December 15th meeting of the Northampton Community Preservation Committee for our last meeting of the year. Uh, as always, we open with general public comment. Uh, is there any general public out there to comment? No. Moving on to approval of minutes of which we have none. This is gonna be theoretically a short meeting, folks. Um, on to the chair's report. Just a couple things that I want to bring to your attention. One is, I don't know if people had a chance to read the Gazette, and I wanna say it was two Saturdays ago, maybe the fourth or maybe the 11th. I think it was a Saturday where there was a nice, um, pretty big uh, article about us in the paper and I think the B1 section, Sarah sent out a really good press release. And I think this is the most coverage we've gotten in a long time. So, I mean, they really covered all of our projects reasonably well. So that was nice to see. It annoys me when other towns get coverage for CPC and we don't. So this was nice to, nice to see that. Just the other thing to report, as I think all of us know, um, Mayor Narkowitz has another two weeks or something like that. And then we're on to a new mayor and a number of new city councilors as well. Uh, so um, I think that will not shake things up for us at all. We've had a very supportive mayor and a very supportive city council. And I imagine that we will continue to do so as the new councilors and mayor are sworn in on, is it the 2nd of January, Sarah, the 3rd? Uh, I think it's the 3rd. Is it the 3rd? Okay. Um, the main thing we have to do tonight is to look at the uh, contracts that are being sent out. The, the city council did meet a week and a half ago, was it? And unanimously approved all of our recommendations, which was really nice because we had a couple that we agonized over. And I think city councilors appreciated the uh, compromise with the Michelson property, not funding them in full. I think that went over, that went over well with them. So as always, it's nice to see our deliberations bear fruit in a unanimous vote by the city council to uh, go ahead and fund what we have so diligently uh, thought, thought through. Uh, so Sarah sent us out the nine uh, memorandums of understanding that the that the uh, grantees get. The 10th one is the disabled housing. Uh, and that is still in the works. It's, as we know, it's complicated. And Sarah can tell us more about that. Uh, a number of, of, uh, of these projects have no specific conditions. They're just the sort of the boilerplate, blanket conditions, pickleball, Pine Grove, Connecticut River, Grove Food, and Historic Northampton have no additions. At least that's my reading of it, Sarah. Um, so what we need to talk about tonight, and maybe we can go through these projects before voting on it in its entirety, is the conditions specific to Lathrop, which are very quick, to the open space acquisitions. And then a little more complicated uh, is Michelson and Valley CDC. So those are the four. Is that is that right, Sarah? Am I correct? Yeah, that, that? that's right. And also, if I if I missed anything from the discussions re, uh, regarding the other projects, or if there's any conditions that anyone may have thought of that might make sense to add to any of these, we can do that at this point as well. So if that's okay. We'll begin in the order that Sarah sent us documents, and the first is that, so. So again, uh, Sarah, correct me if I'm wrong, and uh, unless people have issues with sort of the boilerplate, bleh, boilerplate conditions that are the same for all of the projects, uh, we can sort of look at that last bit of, uh, of stuff that, that, say, that Sarah included, the, the specific conditions. Um, do you want to take us, take us through the Lathrop ones, Sarah, and see if people have any questions about that? Uh, sure. So Lathrop was a small grant, so that is below the city contract threshold. So this is a little simpler looking than some of the more substantial, uh, more substantial contracts. And my key stuck. Uh, 
So the only specific conditions we had were ones that we had had in previous rounds that the grantee shall identify that the project is funded through the, the CPA and its written materials, including website, social media, press releases, et cetera. And that they shall also continue to provide public access to the trails for the term of the agreement and maintain signage indicating that it is open to the public. Any questions for Sarah about that? Linda? Uh, th this is a more general um, in the opposed to the memorandum. The, the memorandum all refer to the um, the city council orders. So any of the conditions that we put into the city council orders are incorporated. And I may have missed it, but I didn't see that the standard contract language has that. No, that's a that's a good catch, Lynn. I noticed that after I put them together, so I'll I'll be adding those to the contract as well. Okay. And I um and then more specifically for Lathrop, I I wondered if we wanted a signage talking about the funding being CPC funding that it it has to make it clear that it, the parking is public and that access is public. Um, did we want it? You know, it's not much money that we're giving them, but a little credit never never hurts. So something above and beyond the Community Preservation Act awareness clause that Sarah has put in there. Well, that's about media and that sort of stuff. It doesn't require any kind of a plaque or, you know, if they're saying public access parking here, they could add language about. Um, support from Community Preservation Committee for invasive species removal or whatever. Sarah, as our word smither, is there a way to incorporate that into language that is appropriate? Martha may have a comment on that since I see her sign her hand up. Martha? I just wanted to add to Linda, thank you for bringing that up. It was something I thought of also. Um, and it's not just Lathrop, it's any project where we have physical um, uh, activity going on that's visible to the public. Uh, so the Shepherd Barn, I think, I think Historic Northampton may already do this, but, um, you know, grow food, um, the, the access to the rowing, um, all of these projects are involved a, a physical alteration to the site or the landscape. And I know in other communities, there's sort of a standard sign that goes up usually, and it says something like, you know, your community preservation dollars hard at work or something like that. Um, I, I didn't see that in um, the, the set of memoranda, and I wasn't sure if that was something that uh, was typically done or had been done in the past or was decided not to be done. Um, uh, so we have a uh, big banners that we distribute to projects where it seems to make right. sense to have something available during construction. Like Historic Northampton has had one for quite a while. Um, you know, we haven't done it at affordable housing projects or ones that are a little bit more sensitive or just don't make sense, but we do have that available for applicants. And we've added conditions regarding permanent signage in cases where it seems appropriate. So if that's something that the committee wants to do for any of these, that's something that can be added. Okay. Do we want there to be permanent signage at the Lathrop uh, trails regarding their, the source of funding? Linda, that's what you had suggested, is that correct? Um, yeah, and I think that some of these projects, obviously the CPA funding is used for a period and then it stops and it's sort of, it's almost like a construction sign on a construction site that you have the, you know, the name of the owner and the sponsor and the contractor and so forth on the sign. Um, I just think it's good PR for us. And also it's important for the community to know where their tax dollars are being spent if they don't read the Gazette or 10 city council meetings or our meetings for that matter. 
Some of the, the really big projects, like uh, the community builders at Village Hill and, and other large projects, have a big construction sign, and we always require that the CPA be added to that. Um, but for smaller projects that don't like historic we, we distribute that banner. But again, we can we can add whatever seems appropriate for any given project. So for later communities, to the last public access section. Uh, I added and crediting the Northampton Community Preservation Act as a source of funding, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Sounds perfect. So uh, Cheryl maintains signage. Can, can you read that, that sentence again, sir? Of course. Yeah, uh, so it's public access. The grantee shall continue to provide public access to the trails on its property for the term of this agreement and shall maintain signage acceptable to the CPC, indicating that the area, including parking, is available for public use and crediting the Northampton Community Preservation Act as a source of funding. Yes, Linda, that's good. Martha, okay, everybody else, thumbs up on that? Yes, great, good. Thank you, Linda and Martha for bringing that up. Anything else on Lathrop? Okay, and Sarah's order is pickleball. Um, was it yesterday the Gazette had the picture of the pickleball players? I think that was it, a big photo. Of, I think it was indoor pickleball somewhere, and I can't remember where that was, but who knew how popular it is becoming? Any uh, specific conditions we want to add to that? No? Okay, moving right along to Pine Grove and the accessible trail, any conditions on that? No, uh, Linda? I'm, I'm a little slow here. I'm still on the, <laughs> I'm still on the pickleball. Um, oh, pickleball. And we may have gone over this before, sir. So probably did and I apologize. But there's some of the language in here that I, I wonder about putting in, particularly when it's the uh, arm of the city, like the, um, the certification about the taxes and all that sort of stuff. Now, you may not feel that you can change boilerplate language without the okay of the law department, I don't know. With the city MOU, it, it, it's not really a problem. If there's something that doesn't make sense, we can have it out. So yeah, that, 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 that's something that will have to be repeated in the recreation department's contracts with whoever they choose to do this work. So okay. is there a specific, a specific thing you'd like to strike, Linda? Well, there's the, the language about pursuant to chapter MGL chapter 62C, section 49A, I certify um, that they've, with, this is the, now the Conservation Commission saying that they've uh, paid all withholding and remitting child support and so forth. And it just, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah, we can strike that. That's not a problem. It's left in there uh, just in case there's a project where a, a city department is hiring a lot of other people potentially without contracts, but the, we, we can take it out, it's not an issue. And the, the other language that I kind of puzzled over is, is under the standard terms and conditions. It's the language on guarantees. And it just wasn't, quite getting what it was trying to say. It says projects funded through the Community Preser Preservation Act shall be, shall be subject to preservation guarantees or restrictions on the property, limiting the use of the interest to the purpose of the funding. Uh, yeah, that's a, that doesn't make sense for the pickleball project. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I kept reading it and saying, I'm just, I must, I didn't get much sleep. What, what's no, going that's on? fine. So, if it, you know, if this is referring to a land acquisition, it would make sense. Uh, but for uh, a feasibility study, it, it doesn't okay. make sense. So, I will cut both of those items from this one. But it's also a little overbroad because we don't want to limit 
I don't know what the interest is, but you don't want to limit the use of the property to just the purposes of the funding because the property, say Michelson Gallery is used for an art gallery. You don't want to limit the use of the property to just historic preservation. It, it's intended to I'm get mean. at the historic preservation and uh, you know, recreation and open space nature of the projects. And it, it takes some of that clunky wording from the enabling legislation. But we we could probably cut that from every contract as this is something that's committed. Or to make it clear. I mean, I think it's fine to be saying you may, may, may be subject to an affordable housing restriction, preservation restriction, conservation restriction as appropriate to the nature of the funding or something like that. That's, okay. I think that's, yeah. that's a good concept. No, that makes sense. I, I, we developed this boilerplate language some years ago and honestly, I haven't really looked at it in yeah. detail a lot since then, but it, for the pickleball project in particular, it definitely doesn't make sense. Okay, now I'll shut up. Thanks. <laughs> no, it's really nice to have your eyes on it. Um, I mean, it's really appropriate to to look at that language in case it does come back to bite us at some point. So we appreciate, Linda, your good eyes on the uh, intricacies of contract language. Um, so that's it for pickleball. Yes. Okay. So moving on to Pine Grove, uh, there were no specific conditions that Sarah set forth. Any did we, other did we want signage for this one? Isn't there already signage up there because we purchased the land with CPC money, correct? Yes, so there is, there's general CPA signage, but I didn't, I didn't know if the committee might want something specifically regarding the trails. And I don't know what additional signage might be put up that's specific to the trails. Again, I think this is a case where when the trails are being constructed, it would be really appropriate to have some kind of a temporary sign up that says that this is being, you know, funded through the Community Preservation Act. Um, you know, it just gives the program more visibility, I think. A lot of people don't even know what it is. So, so I don't know if that's something that can be, you know, added to this. I mean, typically, again, on construction sites, those signs are required, those types of signs are required. So I don't know um, if we wanna be that specific. Um, so your, su your suggestion, Martha, is during construction of yeah. the accessible trail, yep. that signage be placed saying this is due entirely to CBC funding, correct? correct? I think we yes. are the sole funder it's not yeah. in conjunction. Now the, that sign, the sign that's in front of the Smith Charities building right now, that, that's a mass historical preservation. I'm excusing Mass Historical Commission standard sign, but that's kind of what I'm talking about. That you know, it lists where the funding is coming from and who the participants are. And I, I just think we should require it. I think it's important. And it's Sarah, temporary. It comes down once the construction is done. Sure. We don't have Martha. We don't have to be as specific as Mass Historic with the the font sure. size and right <laughs> the color and yeah the height and the, yeah. The, yeah. Uh, no, so I if I add a temporary sign shall be installed crediting the, crediting the Community Preservation Act during construction of the trails. I think that would be great. Is that sufficient? Okay. I think that's perfect. Yep. Sarah, you're so good at taking what people say and putting it into a sentence. That's a great skill. And Thank you Linda, that. I'll also strike those two um, items that, make, that we struck from the pickleball from this MOU as well. Thanks. Anything else on Pine Grove? All right, so moving on to the open space acquisitions. So you wanna lead us through those three specific conditions? Uh, so we have a condition specifying a conservation restriction, um, CPA signage, so a, a permanent sign is required here for all of these properties. Uh, and this is a standard condition that we add that the Conservation Commission shall sponsor a zoning change to rezone the parcel as farms, forests, and recreation. 
and that's the city's sort of strictest zoning, uh, just to make clear that even though this property is permanently protected, there are really limited opportunities for anything to occur here. Other conditions folks wanna bring up? Sarah, we don't specify who holds the conservation restriction. Uh, we, we never have just because things change sometimes. Uh, well, who will hold it? Should, it will likely be Kestrel Trust for all three of you. Great. Anything else on this one or are we good to go? Okay, moving on to the Connecticut River uh, accessible dock. Uh, Sarah included no specific conditions there. I'm assuming we would want signage at least temporary, dur temporarily during construction. Yep. So you can add that. Anything else on the Connecticut River project? Should we take bets on how long the sand Beach will last? No, not a good idea. Moving on, Connecticut River, good, good to go. All right, Grow Food Northampton. Any additions for that one? Permanent signage, in this case, I think. Uh, Probably won't be much to look at during construction. No, I think permanent signage would be would be nice, right? I mean, we're not purchasing land. We are simply helping them to manage it or funding their management. Does that require permanent signage? It's not land acquisition. It is um, land management and expansion. In the, of garden plots. Sarah, do you recall what's there now since a whole bunch of CPA money went into? Yes. It a whole, whole know. bunch being yeah. in bold. <laughs> you know, the, the conservation areas are signed. I, I can't recall whether and how the CPA might be credited at the, the community gardens, although I, I suspect it is in some way. Or we could say, if not already installed. Or yeah. Like that. Is that acceptable, mm -hmm. folks? I think it's on the main sign, but I think, yes, if not, it should be. Great. I'm sorry, you're going to add in the language about in accordance with the city council orders? Yes, I will yep. be done. Okay, good to go on that. Uh, moving right along to historic Northampton. Um, I'm sorry, Brian, can I just quickly note that Sarah, you've made Sarah Lennox the clerk of a lot of- I, I know, I, I cut that okay. too. I was I was editing the, the body of the contract and didn't notice that there was a whole- Yeah, yeah, okay. But I'll, just I'll, I'll fix that. Hadn't caught it, okay. Note. These will also have to be added to DocuSign. Uh, we're not doing paper contracts anymore. So a lot of the, the formatting and, and other errors go away when, when that's transferred over. Good. Thank you, Lynn, again for catching that. Uh, historic Northampton, uh, in terms of signage on that, how do we want to do, deal with that? It's not, it's not construction, it's, renovation of signs. Should each sign have a sign? <laughs> Probably not. I think uh, most of the uh, conservation work is being done off site, if I remember. Is that correct? Yeah. So I don't think so. I don't think there's a need. Um, perhaps if they have an opening, you know, but I'm sure they would credit us anyway. Yes. They're good about that. They're very good about that. Yeah. Okay. So no specific signage necessary for that. All right, moving along, yeah. All right, so to the two that we 
that Sarah has the most uh, changes. Uh, let's begin with the Michelson uh, property. Sarah, you want to run us through what you added there at the end? Sure. And again, you and I talked earlier. You and I talked earlier today about the if the property is sold in five years. Yes, and we did include that in the council order, but I, I omitted that. Oh. Okay. So we can add that. Uh, so just a couple changes from the initial version that I had sent out. Um, so adding the uh, the grantee shall both do the work and execute the historic preservation restriction described below, just to make it really clear that that's an integral part of the project. Uh, and then just some clarifications to the historic preservation restriction, making it clear that it's granted to the city and MHC, and it shall be senior to any mortgage or lien on the property in any form acceptable to the city and MHC. Um, and then everything else had been included. So I, I think I have captured everything except the sale, which I can add right now. Um, but it, if anyone wants to make any tweaks or, or edits, feel free to propose something. Uh, Sarah, to the best of your knowledge, uh, the two major players at Michelson are good with the historic preservation? I, I don't know. So I, I didn't hear from either one of them until today. Uh, I heard from Paul this morning and he had asked what the next steps are. And I directed him back to some historic preservation restriction information that I had provided. And he said he'd be taking a look and we'll get back to me. But there really isn't a whole lot of wiggle room with that. I mean, the state's model is, is what it is. And if that's not acceptable, then I'm not sure how the project will be able to move forward. But you had mentioned, Sarah, that they, or maybe it was just Paul, attended um, the city council meeting and to advocate for approval. He did. Uh, both Paul and Richard had attended that. Uh -huh. uh, knowing that we were funding half of what they, about half what they asked. Yes. Yep. So, okay. Uh, additions or comments on, oh, oh, can you take us through the language with the property sold in? Five years. Uh, so I'm just adding return of funds upon sale, and then just uh, <coughs> verbatim taking that language from the council order that if it's sold within five years, that the funds will be returned. Can Can you read that to us one more time? What the language will be? So this one the order. So if the if the property is transferred within five years, all funds will be returned to the Community Preservation Act revenue account. Folks good with that? Yes. Excellent. Um, I, I had a question. Is there a time frame that can be put on that? You mean uh, if it's sold within a certain period of time? No, funds no it's, if it's when the funds have to be returned, is it upon the sale? Sort of contemporaneous with the sale? Is it 20 years later? Is it, mm. Just to make it clear. Sounds good, 60 days of the sale. I'm just making that up. <laughs> Sounds good think, to me. I would think that the sale would generate the funds for the return. There's no mortgage on the property currently. Yeah. 30 days? So upon the I I would I think it should be contemporaneous. So upon the sale, yeah. the funds shall be immediately returned or something like that. Other folks want to weigh in on this? Martha? Um yes, so this the clause um, that our paragraph that Linda had mentioned earlier about the guarantee, the preservation guarantee, this is included here. 
Um, but the preservation guarantee guarantee wasn't defined. So I just defined it. I underlined and said, is there a form for this or what is this? Because it isn't really defined. Um, and so there's that. And then also um, under the description of the restriction, it says, um, including an affirmative obligation to maintain the historic facade of the building. I think it should say to preserve and maintain. Um, and then I also just wondered about having some kind of a project sign for this project. I mean, maybe it's not such a smart idea given how controversial this is, but I just thought I should raise it. Oh, and then go ahead. No, go. You, you go, Margaret. Also, Sarah, I had one question too about uh, about the article in the paper. Um, I, I think I read this correctly that they stated there was a matching grant for this project from Mass Historical. Uh, they did. They I I okay. think they got that from the um, cover letter in council, and it it should have read that it would be matched by funds from the applicant. Yeah. Okay. And, and not by a grant from Mass Historical. Okay, thank you. Uh, Martha, uh, Linda? I think this is redundant, but given my queasiness about this project, I wondered about again restating that the work has to be done consistent with Secretary of Interior standards. I think that's in the council orders, but just to- uh, It's in there, it's after the reports. Section. Is it oh, okay. historical appropriateness? All work shall conform to the Secretary of the Interior. Oh, good, good. Sorry. And I, I didn't add, uh, and we should discuss this as well. I didn't add any mechanism by which they will need to prove that that's the case. So that may be worth considering as well. I don't. It, it didn't seem like they have a historic preservationist or architect on board. Can you can you think of language that would speak to that? Martha, what's a good way to get insured that that's certified? Yeah, I think we could say something like um, the applicant or the applicant, the grantee is uh, required to engage um, the professional expertise of a um, historic mace, historic structure. Historic social engineer, engineer or historic masonry specialist to assure that the uh, work is being performed or has been performed in accordance with the tech Secretary of Interior standards. And it can't be the person who's actually doing the work, it has to be an outside consultant. What did you call them, Martha? Historic masonry? Um, either a um, uh, consultant, was that the word you used? Historic masonry specialist. Um, or a structural engineer with uh, expertise in the area of historic preservation. Could be either of those. Um, on that, and I'm not disagreeing with you, but I'm wondering if a condition of that nature um, puts a financial, additional financial burden on them. It will cost money to do that, if that's what you're asking, Chris. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm asking. Um, like, are we talking a lot of money? Depends what, on the point I'm getting. The point, the, yeah, the point I'm getting at is that um, it, it's the concept of unfunded mandates, which is if we're going to put a requirement like that in, I think we need to make an allowance for what the cost of that might be, since it's an additional. It it, it could be considered an additional burden, um, and since we're past that point in the process, what we're really doing is reducing, further reducing by what that amount, the amount of money that they have available to do the work. Fair enough. So what do we think? Do we want to add that or leave it just that it shall conform to the Secretary of the Interior Standards? 
I guess I thought since the funding for it won't be released until after the work is completed, that gives the city the ability to have a check on that. Like that's sort of the onus is on them to, to ensure that their work is going to qualify for the funding as per the conditions that we've outlined. Um, I mean, that would then be yeah, a, that's true. that would then be a on the city to for somebody to go and look at it and ensure that. And obviously our goal is not that it doesn't pass that inspection. Um, but that's how I was kind of thinking about kind of catching that in this contract. So are you suggesting, Jen, that the language that Sarah just wrote change from the grantee to the city? And add before releasing final payment? I'm not, I guess I'm not sure. I don't, I don't hate the idea of, I think that it would be in their best interest to employ someone to make sure that the work they're doing falls within this contract. But I don't, I guess I'm not sure how this usually works, kind of who would check on this before releasing the funds. Sarah, have we done this with other grantees like uh, Smith Charities? Uh, Smith Charities had someone on board who was doing that. And the, the, uh, the court, I know the courthouse did as well. I think of other recent historic projects. Most of the building projects that we've done, the, the applicant has included a budget that has provisions for someone to be doing that. So in that case, I think it could be on them to, you know, provide certification from a consultant, as Martha described, that the work was done to these standards. Um, and it's or we, we could say the grantee shall provide certification that the work conforms to the secretary of the interior standards and not be specific about how that needs to happen. If we're right. concerned about cost. Right. Like they could keep someone through the whole process or they could trust that they're going to get to the end and have it be successful. And I don't think we just want them to self-certify. We want a third, don't we want a third party certification? Because they can sign a piece of paper that, that doesn't provide mm -hmm. any more guarantee. Um, Martha, do you have some sense of what this might cost? I, I just don't have a any kind of a ballpark. Do you? I'm not comfortable giving a fee just because I have no idea how um, um, well the work would be executed. And if the work is executed well, it, it wouldn't be of a lot of work for a consultant to just say this is great. Um, it looks like it complies. But if it's not executed well, that's a lot more work. Um, so <clears throat> I, th I think Chris, Chris's point is a good one that this is something we should have raised earlier on. But um, I think we do need to figure out a way that we can ensure that this work is, is being done correctly. Sarah, is this something that um, the administrative budget could be used for? But sometimes there are excess funds that um, get returned. Uh, they're not spent. I just wonder if that's a possibility. Uh, maybe, depending on how that was done. If it was assisting the, the CPA to do its work and, and we framed it that way, then potentially. I think this is something that we should be mindful of in <laughs> at an earlier point forward. in the future. Uh, yeah. uh, Chris is right, but I think we do need to figure out how to deal with it, given where we are right now. There is, um, as we know, grantees come back to us for additional funds all the time. Uh, I mean, we they they could they could come back to us and 
say the project did not come in at the budget we needed and we need a little bit more to tweak it and I think I think this language should stay as it is that Sarah has written it. And 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 we'll and we'll figure out what happens with it. Any one else want to weigh in on this? Or I guess finding? I would just I would add that like Chris, I feel I mean I, I think it's very appropriate that we do want to verify it, but I do feel a little bit uncomfortable putting that burden on the applicant when there's an unknown cost associated with it, given that we know how little they actually understood of what a historic preservation restriction would entail. And I would assume as a result that they have, you know, not a lot of context for anticipating this kind of fee like these other projects like Smith Charity and others before have done if they already had somebody engaged when they came forward clearly they knew that that was something they needed this applicant didn't we didn't warn them um so i, I kind of feel like it's on us so I, I i would like to have it verified but i like the idea of if there's some way that we could uh assist with that because uh, i don't know this feels a little um unduly burdensome for the applicant at a really late stage in the process so here's here's what I would propose. Thank you, Jana. Here's what I would propose as a workaround, um, which is um, as as Brian pointed out, you know, people come back. Um, if if we if we um, inform them that um, a, a follow on request that uh, you know was targeted at covering the the additional costs of this. Um, we would we would look upon it favorably. I think that that might be the way to go about it. And we do that verbally, not in not in. A no, yeah, you don't put it in writing. You just just say, look, you know, this is this is something where at the eleventh hour we 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 felt that this is important to add, but we don't want we don't want you to have to bury the carry the burden on this, um, so that you know if it if it it ends up being a significant. Ex and you know we can decide at the time whether it's significant you know if they do come back whether it's a justifiable expense and they'll have to show us you know have to show us the invoice for services rendered so Sarah do you feel comfortable having that yeah I mean I'm I'm okay with it either way I think it's up to the committee and whatever we decide is best in this instance so keeping language as is as Sarah wrote it and with a stipulation that Sarah verbally tell them that if this is onerous, uh, come back to us. Is that what you're suggesting, Chris? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I'd be willing to have that conversation with them if 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 it's not appropriate for Sarah to do it. But just say, you know, look, there's sentiment, there's sentiment on the committee to to entertain an additional, um, you know, allotment of funds related to this particular expense. Are we comfortable with that? Martha, yes. Linda? Uh, I like I like the approach. I think it should probably be Sarah though, who, um, not that Chris yeah. wouldn't do a wonderful job, but I just think it, it makes it cleaner if it's Sarah who's- uh, and I'm good, Again, I'm good with that too. I just wanted to make sure we weren't putting Sarah in a position where, you know, because as, as a quote unquote, elected official, I can have that conversation with one of my constituents. So it's just, just a thought. I know I don't have an issue doing that. I'm, I'll okay. be working with them quite a bit about the, regarding the historic preservation restriction. Cool. The details of that. So not a problem. Thank you. Uh, Janet, good with, with that. Jen, good. Okay. So that we're adding that one sentence in with the with uh, Sarah explaining what the that is not to represent an onerous burden to uh, to achieve that certification or that uh, anything else on the Michelson property. Okay, moving along to the Valley CDC loan recapture repayment. And Sarah did quite a 
a bit of change in this this afternoon. So can you run that through us? Run that by oh, us. These were primarily Wayne's edits. This type of mortgage program is something that's a little bit outside my wheelhouse, but is something that the Office of Planning and Sustainability works with as part of the Community Development Block Grant Program. Um, can you pull the language up? And yeah, share hang on screen? one second. I'm just moving forward here. All right, so some new uh, new additions, um, clarifying what the grantee shall be doing. So the uh, Wayne added that the grantee shall be responsible for all home buyer support and reporting, which is something that they were absolutely intending to do, which is making that really clear here. Uh, and this will probably get cleaned up when we iron out some of the details with Valley. I, I don't know how they're envisioning the actual administration of the program. So invoices submitted to the city uh, um, to also shall be made payable to the grantee or to a real estate closing escrow agent. And I don't know what, again, what, what they're hoping to do there, but either one is acceptable for the city. Um, mortgage approval, any mortgage note issued using, utilizing these funds shall be approved by the mayor and director of planning and sustainability and shall be subject to two conditions imposed by the mayor and shall be subordinate only to the primary mortgage note. Uh, loan recapture repayment, being specific about that and the details of it, requiring the mortgage note shall accrue a two and a half percent annual simple interest with all mortgage principal and interest payments deferred to when the house is sold, the senior mortgage is revised or the owner, owner selects to pay off the mortgage. Entire mortgage shall be forgiven 15 years after the date of the mortgage note. Uh, making clear that Valley CDC is going to be doing the verification of the homeowner's income eligibility and the standards that they need to report to do that. Uh, and then being specific that if payments are being made to an escrow agent, the grantee shall provide W-9 forms for the purchaser and the grantee shall be responsible for all necessary tax reporting. Sir, I thought the language in there was that after 15 years, it, it, before 15 years, if sold, the uh, the mortgage re is repaid in full. And then from the 15 or six, year 16 to 30, it goes down a certain percent. Wasn't that what was in the contract? There was a step down every year till year 30. Seems like a long time. Yeah, that's that's my memory as well, and and I but I thought that the interest was not forgiven. So I can I will I can't do it right now because it's a little bit too complicated. But I will make sure that that loan recapture section is identical to what's in the the grant request if that's acceptable to everybody. Uh, yeah, just to be okay. make sure we're we're clear about that. Um, and that, uh, uh, and that the entire more the the uh, we have payment should be made back to us, correct? Yes. Uh -huh. So specifically to CPC and not to the general sure. city. Sure. Right. Okay. Other comments or questions or additions to the conditions for the Valley CDC. Property. I, I had a question, Brian. Yeah. Up, oh, you have muted yourself, Linda. I'm sorry. the The 45 calendar days for payment, um, I think, could be logistically quite difficult. It's up to 45 calendar. So I wondered what the reality was. Uh, um, we put that in there. Oh, there's a that's standard language, but yeah, it's standard I, I, language just so that no one can ever say if, if they submit a payment request at a really inopportune time. Why is it taking so long? But it in reality, it almost never takes that long. So that it could be a very quick turnaround because I think that would probably be necessary. Yes. Yeah, okay. definitely. Okay. And when we can always do a special warrant if necessary, if there's a hurry, we never try to take 45 days. But 
Sometimes we need W9 or we need to do a vendor request or something like that. Okay, great. Any other uh, comments about the um, Valley CDC loan capture mortgage thing? Hi, Jeff. How are you? Uh, now, Sarah, could you tell us a little bit about the disabled housing project and where we stand on that? So they do not have the details of their financing situation worked out at this point. We don't know whether it will be an affordable housing restriction that will protect the city funding or whether it will be a mortgage or whether they will even have bank financing. And until those things are solidified and we have a, a more detailed budget and a better handle on exactly how this is moving forward, we, we just weren't able to put a contract together. Nonetheless, they are closing on the property in a uh, week and a half or something? They've, if they need bank financing, no, I don't think that's the case. They won't be able to get their financing in order by then. Um, if they have another way to do that, then potentially, I know they'd, they'd like to close as soon as possible, but I, I, don't, I just don't have the details of that at this point. Sign the for sale sign is still up, which worries me every time I drive by and see it. <laughs> Other questions to Sarah about the disabled housing project? Are we good to go in approving these contracts and memorandums of understanding for our projects? Any further? questions or comments? Can someone make a, I think we can bundle them all together. Sarah, is that right? Or do we have to go one yeah, by one? No, just, wait, wait, can, do, oh. just before we go on. So what, what, what is the, uh, what is the next step on that, on the, um, on the Franklin street project? So are the, we, the, are we going to have to see, are we going to have to see paper on that again at, at some point? Uh, regarding the contract or yeah. the budget or. Yeah, no, the, uh, the contract. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So they right. will need to finalize exactly how they're moving forward and provide us more information. And at that point, we can put a contract together. All right. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments on any of the projects? Is there a motion to approve these contracts? Uh, a motion to approve as amended. Thank you, Chris. Second. 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 Thank you, Martha. Uh, Sarah, you want to take us through a vote? Sure. Uh, Jeff? Yes. Jana? Yes. Linda? Yes. Martha? Yes. Dan? Yes. Jen? Yes. Chris? Yes. And Brian? Yes. All oh, right, unanimous. Thank you. Uh, my, I have a new computer on my screen, and I wasn't even aware that Dan and Jeff were out until right now, so I apologize for that. I was asking for input from others and not from the two of you. My, my apologies. Um, so again, pat ourselves on the back. Everybody do it for a good round, a difficult one, but I think we've got some really good projects that are out there. Uh, Sarah sent us to review the uh, spring uh, schedule. Uh, eligibility, eligibility sheets are due on the 17th of January, applications due on the 5th. Our first meeting is on the 2nd, which is a little bit earlier, but that's to go over the, uh, the, CPC, the CPC plan. So Sarah will have that to us, those revisions in plenty of time for us to take a look at before that second meeting, the, the February the 2nd meeting. And then we move on through. Are there any uh, questions for Sarah about our spring schedule? Good to go on that? Mm -hmm. Great. Um, any other business not foreseen when the agenda was published? Everybody is good? All right, another year, yet another year 
Um, thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful uh, rest of the year. Solstice coming right up on the, on Tuesday. Is that right? When is solstice? Uh, yeah, on the on the twenty first. Uh, so happy rest of December, and we will see you in February. So um, be safe, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Bye. Thanks so much, Thanks everyone. All. Happy holidays. Thanks, everybody. Happy holidays. Happy holidays.